Let us pray. Eternal gracious God, we give thanks for this opportunity this afternoon. As we join together in this Eagle Court for Honor, we give thanks especially for Brian Lee Price and Trevor Nash Thompson. They've worked hard for this award and they have been determined. And we ask your blessing upon their lives that they might continue in that determination as they live their lives out in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The young man has to spend a great deal of time and effort. Therefore, the occasion which recognizes his accomplishments should be something special. This afternoon, we shall follow a pattern which I'm going to call Biting the Evil Trail. When a boy becomes a boy scout, there should be instilled within him something that we call the spirit of scouting. This lighted candle represents that spirit. Because the spirit of scouting embodies the fine principles of the scout oath and law, it becomes a shining beacon of inspiration. Alone, this light may be feeble, but when multiplied by the more than 4 million 38,000 boy scouts, it can become powerful indeed. After a boy has entered scouting, the scout law he has promised to obey is put into effect as the occasion may demand. And one by one, using the flame from the spirit of scouting, we light the symbols that stand for the parts of the law. There are 12 parts, all important and all meaningful. Each is an important foundation in the 
cornerstone of the building of strong character. Stop here because beyond the first summit, 
Eagle Trail still leads on. The broad field of merit badges awaits him. He needs but a total of six to conquer the Star Summit. Probably a lot sooner than he thought possible, he finds himself standing on Star Ridge. Thus, through leadership and achievement, he conquers the first of the three great peaks on the Eagle Trail. Gaining the next summit, the Live Scout, it's not easy. Much leadership, service, and hard work has to be done. In mastering five additional merit badges and helping other fellows, the higher the scout climb, the small becomes smaller becomes the crowd. Yet there are no impossible barriers along this way. This life scout goal can be achieved, but it takes real effort. While the rank of life scout is a much coveted one and deserving of extreme credit, the Eagle Trail does not end there. It still leads on. Toward the summit, its pathway narrows and steepens considerably as it winds along narrow ledges. Mile by mile, it becomes tougher and more trying. Many things have to be done in order to conquer these last miles. Before the highest summit along the Eagle Trail can be attained, many additional merit badges are needed. Some of them are pretty tough, and in the meantime, leadership and service to others is not forgotten. Only those with the greatest amount of persistence and courage are able to gain the thrill of victory that comes while looking down the trail. This is the top of Eagle Summit. We shall now light the symbol that stands for Scout's highest award, Eagle Scout. Now I'd like to um, have the Eagle candidate stand, please, and for the Eagle Scout pledge. Um, Scout signs. I state your name. I run. In the Boy Scouts of America, believe in the Boy Scouts of America. As a movement which has its aim and purpose, and as a movement which has its aim and purpose, character building and citizenship training, character building and citizenship training. I believe it to be a movement that helps a scout become master of his own power. I believe it to be a movement that helps a scout become master of his own power. Helps him get along with other people, and helps him get along with other people, and helps him. Helps him find a worthy use for his time. And helps him find a worthy use for his time. I therefore believe it is my duty, and therefore believe it is my duty, to do my best, to do my best, to obey the scout of the law, to obey the scout of the law. And I hereby renew my faith in scouting, I hereby renew my faith in scouting, and promise to do what I can in service to other scouts, and I promise to do what I can in service to others who have not come thus far along the Eagle Trail. Will the Eagle Color Guard please the scout with parents forward? Trevor Drive, would you please stand? Even though there's a mother, there has to be somebody to kick them a little bit harder along. Would you present your dads with their kids?
usually usually give these out first, but then the boy sticks the mother with the pen. So this is let the mother retaliate. <laughs>
the Complete Scout Badge, which is also the First Class Progress Award, is made up of many things. The tree foil or the flower with three leaves. And as Boy Scouts know, there's also one other thing with three leaves. And it itches. Right, Ryan? <laughs> means that a scout can point the right way in life as truly as a compass can in a field. The three points, like the three fingers of scout sign, stand for the three parts of the scout oath. The two stars symbolize truth and knowledge in the outdoors of scouting. The eagle with the shield stand for the freedom and the readiness to defend that freedom. The scroll with the motto is turned up at each end to hint that a scout smiles as he does his duty. The knock at the bottom of the scroll is to remember to do a good turn daily. With a slight change, the trefoil badge is used by scouting around the world. And it's symbolic completely around the world. When a boy joins boy scouting or scouting, he joins a team. In scouting, no doubt he will be ridiculed, be called a sissy, and be made fun of because of the scout uniform. It is a pleasure to see young men stand that test. We see young men who join that are sometimes squirrels, and I mean literally squirrels. Grow into young men with pride and determination to complete what they start. Over the past 15 years, I have seen some very amazing things. There are several that in a ceremony they're presented with a flag. One of the scouts on a 70 mile hike, when we got to the top of Mount Whitney, opened up his pack and pulled out his American flag. And he said, Mr. Rowley, take a picture of this. He said, this flag has been flown over Washington, it's been flown over Death Valley, so it has been now flown on the highest part of the continent of the United States. You see the boy struggle with his knot, and it's always interesting when they master a knot, and you say, square knot, and they can do the square knot, and then you say, Okay, do the square knot behind your back. And boy, there's bewilderment. But pretty soon, you can tell him any one of the knots. The whole one, he can do that behind his back. He can do it in the dark. Their first camp out. Boy, you talk about disaster. Some of them do a pretty bad job of eating had anywhere from freeze-dried fruit that wasn't cooked, they just mixed it with water and ate it, thought it was good. Uh, one scout, uh, as I walked past him frying pancakes, uh, one of them was my son, the other one was another boy, and one of them is frying Kang pancakes, and the other one is frying cocoa pancakes. Now, if you can go back and eat after watching that, you're better than I am. But another climax to that was that on a hike, and uh, I had myself, but I was going to have macaroni and cheese that night for supper. And this was one of the last hikes that one of the boys was going on and was going on to college. And as I started out with my pants, he came by and said, Mr. Rowley, would you have supper with me tonight? And I thought, okay, uh, I'll check the rest. Now, this is one of the boys that lugged four cans, two and a half pounds of any more stew. Uh, 
uh, in on a 50 mile hike and decided they only ate two. And so rather than lug the other two and a half pound cans out, he ate them. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But he said, give me a few minutes. When I come over to eat supper, I had rice, steak, rolls, and corn. Now this is 15 miles back in. And I thought, this is a change from the guy that had the orange pancakes to being able to come along and be able to plan his menu and make it light enough that he could carry. Their first camp read, their competition from being absolutely scared, knees knocking, to being able to go through competition. And when I'm talking about competition, I'm talking about 300 boys, 300 young scouts and scouts that they're going through competition with and come out with awards. Their first marathon is like pulling teeth to get them to do their first marathon. Then you get a few more marathons. Then something happens. They get to that plateau which is called life, or just below life between star and light, and they die, just like the car run out of gas. Then one or two things happens to them. Well, three things happen. One, a bolt of lightning hits them, and they charge through the rest of their ranks. Or two, they discover a car. Or three, they discover girls. Okay. The, the last two ruin them. Okay. Uh, that's a scout man I'm talking about. <laughs> My wife shaking her fist. Uh, the scouting program. Scout learns by doing. Most of the truth is what we call scout run. The adult leaders that we have uh, mainly give direction, but most of the, the troop running is done by the scouts. You can't imagine that, that how hard it is to see a scout put a flag up on the flagpole downtown. Now we're talking 18 feet off the ground on a little bit of ladder with Mr. Ferris or Mr. Milo or myself holding the bottom. And you pass them the flag and you say up the ladder. And you better have a good hold because the first three times he goes up, the ladder is going to be shaking so hard that you're going to have trouble holding it. But after he's done it once or twice, then he's like a monkey up the ladder and down. He learns to depend on others. He learns how to depend on others and how to support others. It's a great pride to, to see a scout counsel another scout in a merit badge or a skill award. After he reaches the first class or a patrol leader, then he's allowed to counsel or to pass off the other scout. When I first did this, I thought, boy, this is going to be hard. You know, I know that they're not going to really be, be to the point that they're going to make them whole. They're going to, they're going to let them slack, though. And so the first couple I'd set within ear range. And let me tell you, an older scout, growing a younger scout, is much, much tougher than I'd ever be on. I watched one scout get flunked four times for a skill award because he didn't know right down to the last word of what was supposed to be there. Where I had probably shined it on and let it go, but that is what happened. He starts to believe in himself. He understands that he can do it. And sometimes I have heart failure watching him can do it. But you have to stand back and you have to let him do it. And he learns to help others in this process, that it is a team. And he learns to help those other people. And he learns to listen to the other people that are with him. 
He learns to work with adults. And sometimes this is hard. Very hard. Sometimes adults cannot be pleasant when you call them at 8 o'clock at night and want your hair badge at 10 in the morning. Or you set up an agreement with an adult and when you get there the adult isn't there or the adult forgot about it. Or you can't find a merit badge counselor after you've called 27 times. But at least it shows them what they can do in that process. Troop 483 is thankful for United Methodist Church for, for having this type of a building and a room downstairs to meet in. A lot of other troops are not that fortunate. We have a terrific amount of support from leaders. Right now, the, the two gentlemen in front of you for the leaders in this troop is number 26 and 27. The young scout who lit the candle, Steve Holman, is number 28. Steve Williams, who is probably that far behind him, is number 29. And Ragu is about a half an inch. Polkarni is about a half an inch. So by the end of the year, with the leaders of this troop, we will stand at 30 people, providing nothing else changes. I would like to thank some people, and I'll do it right now before I turn it over to Jeff. Ed Holman is in the back. Of Ed, would you stand up, please? Ed is our committee chairman. He's, he's the only one that can, that can whip me in a line besides my wife. Uh, we have Alan Ferris. He's back here. Alan, if you stand down and see Alan or not, he'll, he'll do some of the presentations. And Jeff Bilo, who you've already met. Uh, Steve Gates, uh, who is reading his... Steve is one of our Eagles for a long time ago. And uh, Robert Deering, who couldn't be here this week. At this time, I would like to ask the Eagles, or anybody that has an Eagle, to please come forward. That is an Eagle Scout. Down front, please. I would like, to, like you to give the year and your true number that you received the Wait. Darren, why don't you start in, please? Darren Moody, Troop 43, 1985. Where are you seeing it? My kind of Troop 45, uh, the Williams, Virginia, 1975. Richard Aston, Troop 43, 1987. Kenneth Ferris, Troop 43, 1987. His prize, Troop 43, 1987. Steve Marsh, Troop 43, 1983. Steve Gates, Troop 43, 1981. Okay, give him a big hand.
little scout myself, it's always a special pleasure to be able to participate with all of you in, in this program. That being said, congratulations to you parents, because I know that the time and effort and the agony many times on occasion that you've been through, and you deserve as much recognition for your efforts as the boys do. They can't do it alone. And I know the leadership of this troop must be absolutely outstanding. Uh, to have 30 eagles notched on your belt by no means shabby. Congratulations to you. Brian, if you would please come up here. I have I have a note here from the Scoutmaster that your project was to build a shade room for the treehouse for the uh, preschool yard. It sounds like a good beginning for a career in architecture. And I hope once you get your degree in back to when you are home. Ceremony 
and especially today as we honor Trevor and Ryan. And I'm going to ask Trevor and Ryan to come up. This always panics them because they never know for sure what I'm going to do, but I want them to know I have never looked in like this. <laughs> Assemblyman Lancaster always asks that I bring a couple messages to you at, um, at this time. And the first being that to all of you adults who have been instrumental in helping Trevor and Ryan achieve this honor, he wants me to say thank you, especially to the Cow Scoutmasters and all those in the troop who have helped, and of course, especially to the parents. He not only says his thanks, but also his congratulations. And I was at a gathering not very long ago, and a retired gentleman gave me his card, and I think that your uh, commitment and support to these young men is best uh, exemplified by what this gentleman had on the back of his business card. A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was, the sort of house I lived in, or the kind of car I drove, but the world may be different because I was important in the life of a boy. And I think that that certainly epitomizes all you leaders and you adults do in helping these young men achieve their goals. Trevor and Ryan have joined a very elite group today. And as you had heard earlier, only about 3% make it. There are Eagle Scouts in 119 free countries throughout the world. So it would be very exciting if you ever had a chance to travel to meet some of your fellow uh, Eagles. There is also a monument in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, erected to the Eagle Scout. And I hope you have a chance to see that one of these days. As we noticed by our program today, Trevor and uh, Ryan have certainly been very active in their school and in their community. They've gotten many awards and many accomplishments. And as they have discovered during their high school years, uh, the awards that you receive in junior high are quite so important. You're going to find your high school awards are not quite so important during college as you go throughout life, with the exception of the Eagle Scout. Uh, so many times the awards that we receive, as we all know, they become in the past. And yet I have never heard an Eagle Scout to put that in the past. They are Eagle Scout today. 50 years from now, they are still Eagle Scout. And I was intrigued that Trevor wants to be a uh, Marine pilot because my husband was a liaison officer for the Air Force Academy for about 15 or 20 years. And I know that any Eagle Scout is automatically, when they apply for the Air Force Academy, get 10 or 15 points right off the top of being an Eagle Scout. Uh, colleges, first jobs, this is all very important because it shows the commitment they had. The second um, message that the Assemblyman would like me to bring today is how very proud he is of his boys. He realizes that Scouting is not the most popular organization at times to be in. And he gives you extreme credit for setting this goal and definitely for achieving this goal. And if you leave and continue to live your life according to the ideals of the Scout Law, you're going to be a credit to yourself, to your family, to your country, and to your God. And the Assemblyman congratulates you and wishes you the very best. And he asks that I present you now with the following. First of all, the Constitution of California and the United States. He also asks you he also has a certificate of merit from the state assembly for each of them and a personal letter from him. As well as the state flag of California with the certification that it has flown over the Capitol. And along with this, 
are the rules and regulations for modern society and federal law no regulation. And with this, I send you again, congratulations and best wishes. Shake your hand before I give you the rest of There is never a good way to do this. I have not quite figured this out.
have a, a congratulations from the Government Nations Office that states, congratulations on becoming an Eagle Scout. You can be proud of this achievement, and you have my best wishes for continued success in scouting, most importantly, George Fifth Nation. congratulate you on attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. This achievement symbolizes your commitment to the Boy Scouts of America and the principles it embodies. Best wishes for your continued success. Signed, Barbara Bush and President Bush. Throughout the past few years, I've been faced with many challenges. Um, some of these challenges have been small, while others have been large. One of these challenges, though, has changed my life forever. This was the quest to achieve the Eagle Rank. The attainment of the Eagle Rank signifies many valuable lessons that will never be forgotten. From lessons like tying knots to hiking in the outdoors. A place, um, there will always be a place for scouting in my mind and heart. Earning the Eagle Rank is a great honor, but one cannot claim the victory all to himself. Dedicated scout leaders, good friends, and supportive family members is needed to help one become the best in both scouting and in life. Um, at this time, I'd like to thank and honor the people who have helped me become what I am today. First of all, I'd like to start off by thanking all my friends. And when I call your name, there's not too many other out there right now, but please stand up, please. Um, I'd first like to say thank Robert Ashley. Uh, Marty Barrett, Josh Goldsmith, and Brian Murray. Uh, Mike Schuler, my girlfriend, Janice Jeffs. Um, and lastly, but surely not least, two people have who have grown very close to my heart, like almost brothers, Brian Price and Jason Hunt. Can you all give him a big hand, these guys? Um, all right, next I'd like to first to thank uh, oops, my friends. Next I'd like to thank the leaders who have helped me with past and knowledge of scouting on me. I'd like to start off with Mr. Milo, uh, Mr. Ferris, Mr. Darren, who isn't here at the time, Steve Bates, and Mr. Roy. And without you guys, I wouldn't be up here. Thanks a lot. And finally, I would like to thank the members of my family who have always been there for me. I'd like to first start off by William Crawford Rodriguez. And um, 
my stepdad, Joe Alvarez, and although he is my stepfather, he has become the person who I look to like a dad. Thank you. And finally, I would like to thank my mother, Bonnie Alvarez, and I'd like to thank you for everything you taught me in life. Uh, thanks again for always being there when I needed you. And lastly, I'd just like to thank everyone in my family, both my blood family and my acquaintance family. Thanks for always being there, supportive, and loving them. Thanks a lot.
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. They didn't say it's come out and tie his shoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's good. That concludes our Eagle Board review. Uh, we'll have a Eagle receiving line up front, and then there will be refreshments uh, next door. Thank you very much for coming. that again